and not, I think culturally, especially in finance, it's such a, it's such a man's world finance. It's, it's all about, you know, I don't know if this is okay to say on the show, but it's, you know, from Michael Lewis's book, right? It's all about the big swinging dick on the sure, floor. Sure. So yep, yep. They, you want to look powerful all the time. You want to look like you have just, you know, uh, taken a hill, you know? So they're thinking, oh, well, if I have a coach, then does that make me less of a man? Does, if I, if I get tr seek help in any way, does that make me look less masculine or less like a baller? And that show, if it did anything, it showed a really strong, confident man able to still get help. And, and his, you know, obviously he's a complex character and there's many sides to him, but he also, he's a very smart man, but he's smart enough to know that he can't see himself. Hey, Steady Trade listeners, Tim Bowen here. Before we dive into today's episode, I'd like to talk a little bit about Stocks to Trade and Stocks to Trade Pro. Since you're listening to this, I have to assume you're serious about trading stocks, which means regardless of how you trade or your skill level, you need a tool to help you generate trading ideas. From live data feeds, technical and social media scanners, to the state-of-the-art Oracle scanner, Stocks to Trade offers everything you need in one easy-to-use platform. If you're new to trading and not quite sure how to get started, or maybe you're nervous about risking your hard-earned money, then the Stocks to Trade paper trading feature is perfect for you. You can practice strategies in real time with real stocks without the fear of losing money while you learn. Or if you're really looking to jumpstart and really dive in and really start your trading career for real, join me at Stocks to Trade Pro, where I give 11 live webinars a week and work with students nightly to help them become self-sufficient traders. I don't think there's any better way than twice daily webinars every single day trading day. I never miss a day, never call in sick. I've given over 1,750 webinars in three years. I think it's the best way to learn, grow, and improve and rapidly cut your path to consistency. So that being said, for pricing and more information, head on over to stocksatrade.com. And now let's get back to today's episode. Welcome back to the Steady Trade Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to talk about, you know, one of the most popular uh, trading related, I guess you'd call it a series TV shows um, out there the last couple of years. And, and that is Billions. Many of you have maybe checked it out and um, uh, you, you might be surprised by my opinion on Billions as a, as a lifelong uh, finance dork. But, um, you know, Kim's got an opinion too. And, and what's cool is, if you've watched Billions, you'll know that one of the one of the main characters is you know Axe's coach, well the well the whole hedge funds coach, and you know that is very there's a lot of parallels with what Kim does. So it'd be kind of cool to hear, you know, it's like it's like a lot of times like when you know like uh, oh here we go another I'm gonna go on another Joe Rogan fanboy. <laughs> But, but if you listen to the Joe Rogan podcast, you know nothing drives him more nuts than when they do like a fight scene, like a MMA fight scene in a movie. Yeah. This guy is, I mean, he is an expert. He's got his 10, he's been fighting since he was like 16. He's been yeah. commentating. He's probably watched more fights than anybody in the world. And then he sees one in a movie and it just drives him nuts. You know? So, because he, uh, he knows it's not real. Exactly. Uh, oh. exactly. You totally. know, and, and he's obviously hypercritical too, because that's his totally. specialty. That's his, that's his specialty yep. too. So I'm dying to know what you think of billions. So I get a sense that maybe you're not such a fan of it. No, no. So, so let, what, you, you want to start there? Yeah, let's start right there. So let's I gave up. On. I, I, you know, I know about the show. I obviously, you know, you know, I was a, a huge Homeland fan. So I was always, uh, you know, you know, Brody was, you know, I knew, I knew the actor, you know, um, was, was, 
you know, Homeland kind of fell apart at the end, but the wife and I watched all, all the seasons of Homeland really liked it. So, I mean, I, I never knew- watched Homeland. What okay. was Homeland? That was, um, with Claire Dane, that was like the CIA, um, it was on Showtime as well. Oh, cool. But, um, you know, it's, it's like the, it's like the CIA and actually Axe or Brody, you know, I, I can't mm-hmm. remember his real name, but he would, he like got abducted by ISIS and they like turned him into a mole. And then he like got into the CIA and like tried to kill the vice president and stuff. But it was, the first few seasons were really good. Wow. Especially if you, I mean, I like military type yeah. stuff and there was a lot, sure. of, a lot of that. Totally. So, so anyway, knew the actors, saw the show. And again, obviously if you're a listener of the podcast, you know that all I do is read about finance. It's been my interest forever. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's my hobby. It's my passion. It's my career, you know? So I went in maybe with too high of expectations. I don't know, but I'd heard about it, heard about it because what I do. And one of the cool things about the world we live in is I never watch a show when it comes out. The, the, mm-hmm. the cool thing about the world we live in is yeah. you, you, if you just keep hearing about it, hearing about it, like, you know, like Game of Thrones. I didn't watch Game of Thrones until four years in, but you just heard Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones. So you knew you had to watch it. Breaking Bad. I don't think we started watching Breaking Bad till three seasons in, you know, and, wow. and we, we loved them both, you know, both of them. And so it's like a filter. You're using the, the masses as a filter to yep. only have the cream, the top of the cream. It, well, I mean, exactly, because there's just so much out there. You know? so much that, that's, that's the thing, you know, when, when, you know this'll, this'll date Kim and I, but when, you know, when we were kids, there was ABC, CBS, and NBC, right. man. You had three channels. That was it. And it was hard to choose sometimes. Rockford Files, Darcy and Hutch. <laughs> yep, yep. So, so, but now there's just so much out there. So anyway, fast forward, um, you know, it's, it's two or three seasons in. I hear about it a lot from my buddies on the trading community and stuff like yep. that. And so at, the, at that time, um, I, was in, I was on a business trip. I, I remember I was in Miami, Miami Beach. And the weather was kind of crappy. And I was like, hey, you know, it was, it was getting to, you know, it was like evening. It was in the winter. So it's dark. And I don't, I, you know, I don't go out, um, especially when I'm by myself. I'm, I'm a hermit, you know. But um, so I'm like, okay, I'll watch Billions. So I watched first episode. I'm like, yeah, it's all right, you know. And then I watched the second episode. And then I get to like the third episode. And, and, and this, I, you know timeline might be right but like i get to the third episode and he like you know he buys that does he buy the school or or the, uh, comp- the company well he and wants to he wants to have his the, name the guy his that was like mean to him in high school he yeah. like buys his company and like shuts it down or something am i right yeah i think something so like, and yeah. i'm just like i don't know Oh. You know, it just didn't click for me. It's like, oh, you he, should have stuck he, with he, it. Well, well, and, and again, I'm three episodes in. It's probably like midnight. I go to bed early, and I'm just like, okay, he's one of the masters of the universe. Yeah, worth yeah. billions of dollars. Yeah, and he's going after guys that weren't nice to him in high school. They were still getting his character warmed up, Tim. They 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 took a little bit of time. Okay. And, and, and I will, well, here's, here, here's a sales pitch. It's your, your, you're obviously a fan. I'm a so fan. part of this episode is you got to sell me to pick back up on season one, episode four, <laughs> after he got back at the guy that was mean to him in high school. So well, he's a complicated person, the character. Okay. He's complicated. Like all of us are, sure, sure. he can be petty at times. He can be, you know, uh, the shadow side of him can certainly show up, but it, and I'm not saying also, I gave it a fair shake. I'm just, no, I, I just you, you asked for the story, so I gave you the story. <laughs> that is the story, but it's not a fair shake story. <laughs> and this character is complex, and you got to like realize that that is a part of him where he's getting even with somebody. But you know, I'm not defending his character because he does a lot of nefarious things. Okay, okay, but it's a very entertaining and it's I think what I like the most about it is that I was worried at the beginning of the show that it would misrepresent coaching see Uh, and I only saw you know with my limited involvement 
they basically for what I saw, they kind yeah. of introduced the character. I don't think yeah. she was, she probably, I probably saw 10 minutes of her tops. Yeah. Because yeah. there was, you know, like they introduced, you know, just like they're setting it up, obviously. Of course. They like had a meeting, they were talking about stuff and that was kind of it for her. Yeah. So. Yeah. They, the first uh, episode, I'm not sure if it's the first episode, but there's one scene where uh, Wendy, you know, has the guy kind of pound on his chest. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I don't know that I've ever had anybody pop on their chest in a, in a coaching session. That was the only piece. So it was that probably was like, like, was it like Matthew, Matthew McConaughey and in, in Wolf of Wall Street type thing or what? It was. It was yeah, a little bit. Thing. Like the guy was demoralized because he was not doing well. And she reminded him like how much he made for the firm. Like it was like $22 million or something like that. So she was like, you know, like shake out of it. So I, I understand why she had him do that. But I just remembered thinking, you know, wow, if this coach character doesn't look uh, legitimate or real or uh, trustworthy, then that is going to impact my business. <laughs> Interesting. Cause, cause yeah, you know, it. I mean, again, everybody that's in trading watches that show i mean i i that's that's why i watched it now yeah. I, again i yeah. gave up too early but there was a yeah. i was interested in it because it's like you know it's like if you're any whatever you're if, if you're a car guy you're that's gonna right. watch the car shows you know <laughs> exactly. exactly and i just thought holy mackerel here is such an opportunity for my business to get some great airtime you know get some free advertising or it's gonna destroy the concept it, if it makes makes a mockery of the coaching process but very fortunately it did it's done such an accurate job her character the coach is interesting because she has this very kind of interesting relationship with her husband and um i won't get into that <laughs> what the point is that side of her uh you know of course they have to do that because it's television but the point is when she's coaching acts in particular and other people in the hedge fund i just found it to be tremendously well done and that made me feel uh relieved and it also i i saw more business come in believe it or not interesting interesting because because the the guys that'll come to coaching now feel like they have permission through that show. Here's this guy who's a true baller, you know, that term, and he has a coach. So maybe it's okay finally for me to have a coach. Which is, which I is, so, you know, and this will be a little bit off tangent. We can, we can come back yeah. to the show, but which is something that's so baffling to me. You know, again, obviously I, I do a lot of mentorship with Stocks of Trade and, you know, I've been at this for 13 years now and, you know, and mentoring newer traders. Obviously I'm not me mentoring billion dollar hedge fund managers but what blows me away is like you know people that are like that that don't see the value in in coaching i mean it's like like i mean if, if you remember the tom brady joke from 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 back this summer um you know but but i mean it's like tom brady is i mean i'm sure somebody's listening to this and they're you know they probably hate him because they their team is the not not his you know the new england's beat over and over but i pretty much everybody agrees he's the greatest quarterback ever the guy's probably got six coaches you know he's yeah. got he's got a, a head coach he's got an offensive coordinator he's got a quarterback's coach he's got a strength and conditioning coach he's got a nutritionist he's probably got a mental coach you yeah. know sure like it's like here he is the greatest ever and he's got seven coaches it's like and but but yet so many people think yeah. well you know I, I don't need coaching. I'll figure it out on my own or, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of weird. But I, I where, where do you think that comes from? Where do you think that's that the cultural from? conditioning you guys it, are kind of set up with that you have to do it yourselves, that you enough. have to be autonomous and that you're not a real man. If you show any weakness or if you show any sort of like non autonomy, autonomy, and not, I think culturally, especially in finance, it's such a, it's such a man's world finance. It's, it's all about, you know, I don't know if this is okay to say on the show, but it's, you know, from Michael Lewis's book, right? It's all about the big swinging dick on the sure, floor. Sure. So yep, yep. They, you want to look powerful all the time. You want to look like you have just, you know, uh, taken a hill, you know? So they're thinking, oh, well, if I had a coach, 
then does that make me less of a man? Does, if I, if I get tr seek help in any way, does that make me look less masculine or less like a baller? And that show, if it did anything, it showed a really strong, confident man able to still get help. And, and his, you know, obviously he's a complex character and there's many sides to him, but he also, he's a very smart man, but he's smart enough to know that he can't see himself. Yeah. He can't, he can't be neutral when it comes to himself and his willingness to be wrong, his willingness to make mistakes and to see how he's attached even to his trade, trading, you know, kind of mentality, uh, gets really a lot of, uh, it gets put under the microscope in his coaching sessions with the coach. And that is what I feel has been helpful, perhaps just to men in industry to see that while wow, they can have blind spots. See, and I think I, I tell you, that is something that I think is, you know, that, that like set, you know, I don't know, I'm going to try and put it in my caveman terms, but that like set in your ways and, and refusing to learn and grow, I think it's so, so detrimental to trading because man, you're going to be wrong a lot. And I mean, just the philosophy I've always had is I always want to know how stuff works or, or how to, how to learn something new. Like, like if I'm somewhere and someone's like doing something, I'm like, you know, Hey, you know, what, what are you doing? There? How's that work? And, and, and it's always that, that curiosity, curiosity, That's curiosity. That mindset. And but you can't afford curiosity if you feel so insecure that to express not knowing to you is potentially leaving you vulnerable to be made fun of. Like if you want to be curious, you have to admit that you may not know how to do that, yeah. whatever that is. And yet being vulnerable and looking like you don't know something I mean, you guys have been conditioned since the playground to always be somebody who knows. And I think, I feel like men have been, you know, kind of painted into a corner with that. I, I, for, for whatever reason, this, 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 I, this story comes into my mind. Um, I've, uh, you know, you know, I've always liked, liked to build stuff. I've always been like a week, weekend handyman, always had an interest in that. Um, I've, re I, I remodeled a lot of houses. I've got rental properties I take care of. I built this building, you know, but, um, I think back to when I built when your I, house, when I built the house, um, I, I was the general contractor for the, for the project. And I've got a buddy that is a, that is a full-time builder. And, and I bring him in for the stuff that's too big. Cause there, you know, you can't set trusses as one guy, you know, you, no. you, you can't do it, you know, you, but it, so, so the big stuff I bring him in and he's got a guy that, that this is 15 years ago, mind you, yeah. but he's, you know, so I'm 30 at the time, but again, I'd been building stuff since I was in my early twenties and, you know, I'm, I, I knew, and I was the general contract. I pulled the permit, you know, yeah. I worked with the architect, et cetera. So we're setting the engineered floor joists and I'm like, I'm like, and, and, and this helper dude, that's like 45 years old, you know, so he's a lot older than me and he's been building his whole life. And I'm looking at the print and I'm like, no, I'm like, this isn't right. I'm like, they get, we gotta, we gotta spin them around because of the way that the spacing on the, the knockouts for the utilities line. up. And this dude just gets flaming pissed at me and he leaves the job leaves. And this is the helper of, of the, of my builder buddy. Wow. And you know, they're yelling at each other. And, but it was just that fact that he wasn't going to hear it from me. And I'm like, here's the print. I'm like, yeah. look, yeah. you know, and my builder buddy agrees, but basically he perceived it as me pulling rank on him, even though it was my damn house. I was, a, <laughs> and I was the general contractor, but that it's because he felt ashamed because he didn't see it, but it's a simple mistake, you know? Yeah. But, but, we, but mistakes aren't simple for people who think that's their identity. Exactly. And that's, that's, that's why the story came to mind. He came back a week Great later, story. still wouldn't did talk he? to me, still wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> he probably never talked to you again. No, he did like, a, he, did, he did like at the end of the project, but, did he? but there was, he would just, we were there, but we didn't talk. And I'm like, whatever buddy <laughs> that's because because you guys have been so made to feel shame for ever making a mistake yep. and that's you know and honestly that happens across the board like women are shamed and sure. men are shamed like but that is the most powerful tool is to create shame in somebody because that is debilitating to everybody 
And that is what I think that show, if it did anything, is it's helped men be able to see that there's no shame in being attached to things that you may have kind of unconscious reasons for doing certain things. Like I'm sure they, they take that apart. Like why is he doing what he's doing to just get back at this childhood buddy, sure. you know, but he would be the first one. And that's what's so interesting about his character for a guy who's so kind of cocky for lack of a better word. He also realizes, huh, I have some kind of, things from my past that are driving my bus and that keeps me from being as successful as I could be. So the more I look at that without making myself wrong or shaming myself, the better chance I have at being free to go back to my brilliance, go back to my ability to see opportunities where nobody else sees them. Uh, and that's what, you know, his coach does with him and, and that they show that dynamic and his willingness to see how he might have attachments. To me, it's like, I just think it's great for, for people to just give themselves permissions to finally, okay, I, wow, I have some stuff maybe in my basement that needs to be dealt with. And you know, at the start actually of my book, when I wrote Transforming Wall Street, part of what, why I wrote that book, I was responding to Occupy, which Occupy Wall Street at the time, in my opinion, was trying to shame, uh, you know, Wall Street into yep. uh, why they were so wrong. And then even Michael Lewis came out with a quote that said, you know, uh, everybody on Wall Street, you know, they need to feel more shame. And, and the reason I wrote my book was like, no, that is not the way to go. Making people feel more ashamed is going to shut everybody down. How do we not make people feel ashamed? How do we make people feel like they're human? And then you can start to make change. Which, which is interesting. You make that point, you know, going back to like Occupy and like, like it's, it's, it's interesting to me, this, I'm sure you see the headlines right now, the, all this hate on billionaires. I mean, like Bernie, Bernie, and again, I, you know, Bernie's got some good ideas. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, nobody should be a billionaire. I mean, it's like, how does that make sense? I mean, doesn't make sense. I mean, how do you get, I mean, you don't get an iPhone without people with crazy aspirations. You know, mm -hmm. you don't get, and, and, you know, this goes back to our love of Ayn Rand. I mean, you don't get ridiculous skyscrapers without ambition and, yeah. and, and drive. And, you know, it's like, so it's, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, think, I think the people that are anti-billionaires are, you know, they're, I feel that there's a limitation in how they're viewing it. Is the system rigged in certain ways? Sure. Yes, right. Are taxes for the middle class ridiculously high compared to what it is for billionaire yes and that system needs to change but you can't make billionaires it's not billionaires like some billionaires have rigged the system because they lobby and they pour money in you know in ways to keep the rules benefiting them that's who in my opinion the people that are frustrated with the billionaires like focus on that but don't focus on the concept of trying to be the most successful you can be exactly that is socialism and that isn't gonna that doesn't do so well last i checked <laughs> <laughs> wait i thought i thought it was just the greatest system ever i thought it, oh I, you know God. i thought I mean, you know all 500 times it's been tried it turned out great you know and that and that's ultimately what's happening now i think in our government like the the rules that are so lax giving the corporation the rights of a human you know when you watch i don't know if you ever saw that movie that talks about when the corporation got the rights of a human yeah. being. I, mean, I didn't watch it, but I'm from yeah, citizens. Corporation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is a screwed up situation. And, and even the concept of the shareholder value, like that is re really a recent concept that only started 30 years ago where we put this focus on short, short term, uh, you know, ism and just making sure a company, a company that you want to build for many, many years, like if they don't make profits every quarter, you're, you're somehow doing something wrong. That is not accurate. And yeah, it's all, like, all know, of that yeah. stuff is kind of coming out of this. I, I grew up, a, you know, obviously a Steve Jobs fanboy. I mean, I had an Apple II in 1984. Did you pretty, really? about, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure Steve Jobs didn't give a rat's ass about the shareholders, you know. He wanted to make the best cool. computer there was, you know, cool. and, then, and then the best phone. And then, and then he became a billionaire because of that. That's right. But again... Now you can walk around with, you know, again, an Apple II, okay? If you're, if you're 20 years old, Google that, okay? It's the green screen computer. 
that you could basically do nothing with. You know, now, <laughs> you'd have to, if you wanted to play a game, you had to load it off the cassette. And no it's way. 45 minutes just to load the game off of a cassette, okay? Oh you know, now God. you've got literally got a supercomputer in your pocket with unlimited <laughs> connectivity. You know, so. All right, so let me tell you my favorite part from Billions. Good, good. My favorite part from Billions was, it, it's there's- Season one, episode four, right? Right, when I gave up, right? No, it's, it's a little later. It's like, I think it's season two or three. I'm sorry to make you watch all of that. <laughs> but you got to give it another shot. I will. I promise. Gotta I, give it that's my, shot. I always like to give you and the listeners homework. My homework you is, you homework. I promise I will give, it's winter. Okay. You know, I really, uh, you know, I, I barely watch, in. barely watch any TV, you know, in the summer and stuff. But I mean, it's, it's winter. I don't even own a TV. It's I haven't cool. had a television in 15 or 20 years. And, so and, yeah. And, if and, I'm watching this on my laptop, you know, it's gotta be good. <laughs> but, it, but it's hunker down mode in the wind in the Midwest. So, right. you know, it, it gets dark at like two in the afternoon <laughs> and it's 10 degrees. So, so, so I will give it another chance. Okay. All right. So the best episode, I won't give all the details cause you have to, you know, work your way into it. Spoiler alert. But, no, no spoiler. No spoiler alert. Well, there was a little bit of a spoiler alert, but, but you can handle it. Uh, and so can the listeners if they haven't watched it, but they have to watch it too. Yes. Um, so there's an episode where she, there's this huge breakthrough. He has this huge breakthrough and he's just so blown away by her coaching that she comes out of her, uh, what's the bike, what's the bike uh, chain where you do this, the bike riding. Well, spin studio, but there's a bunch of different yeah. ones. But okay, so it's a spin studio is what you It's like a spin that. studio. Yeah, yeah. And she comes out in the morning, like seven o'clock in the morning, and acts is outside on the street in New York City, because it's all set in New York, with a Maserati for her. <laughs> and I was so excited. And <laughs> I was like, oh my God. So I was talking to a prospect at the time who was thinking about working with me. Of course, he watched Billions, and he was like, if you help me get to this goal, <laughs> I'll get you a Maserati. <laughs> and I like didn't even finish reading the email before I printed that email up and like, put it in a safe deposit box. <laughs> and he was like, you should print this up. I'm like, print it up, honey. It's already in a safe yep, yep. deposit box. I've got it in multiple safe deposit boxes <laughs> in three secure locations. Yeah. I was like, because I know I'm going to get you to that goal and I am going to claim that prize. <laughs> Oh, so anyway, that's that's my favorite episode. That's why I sent you the gold Maserati. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're saying again that yeah. that that you think our listeners should. You know, I'm guessing a lot of people have watched it, but you're saying they should watch it. So you know, yeah. I mean, look, it's a fictional show. There's even, a lot even of with all of even with Dollar Bill's depravity. Yeah, even with Dollar Bill's depravity. I mean, you know, I have to say when I. As much as I love being a coach, there are times when I miss the, to, to work with traders to the left of you, which I did, I had like 15 of them to the left of me. They're all geniuses, these guys, you know, to work in a hedge fund atmosphere, the energy, the excitement, the intellect, the sense of perfection, the sense of speed, everything that happens, it's, it's somewhat intoxicating. Oh, sure. It's oh, yeah. exciting to be around that kind of brilliance and it, it doesn't mean people are perfect. Of course they're not, but there is something exciting about that. So when I, you know, have that little bit of missing that energy, uh, it is how, you know, I'll get that little bit of a fix watching the show. I think I want to say, you know, there's, there's a lot of like criminal activity happening as well, which I am not an advocate of. Well, but they got to keep it, you know, you got to keep, keep, keep it interesting. Yeah. yeah. They got to keep it interesting. If, if not, it'd and, just be a documentary. Yeah. Correct. So. Correct. So, but I think the concept of, the, the characters and the personalities and the kind of emotional side of a man, if nothing else, uh, is finally displayed in a prime time kind of show in a way that makes men, I hope, begin to realize that there's nothing wrong with them if they have emotions or feelings or they have some things in their past uh, because that's part of being human. So yeah. if, if it does nothing else but that. So, um, so, so again, I promise I will watch it. Um, okay. Some of the takeaways I, you know, I, that, that I mentioned is, is, you know, to you, the listener, I mean, obviously, 
you know, again, check out Kim's book. You know, you can check out Stacks of Trades Pro. It's a mentorship program. I'm doing a webinar here in an hour. Um, you know, and just, and, and there's a, you know, YouTube is amazing. There's a, you know, you can just use books as your coach. I mean, I mean, there, but, but I mean, I think that, I think that, that one of the biggest things that trip people up in this business is, I mean, it's really, really hard. And like you said, you know, you mentioned the point that Axe admits that he can't see himself. You know, you can yeah. see everybody else. Yeah. It's really hard to see yourself. And, yeah. um, you know, exactly. if you're struggling or if you're, I mean, if you're really passionate about this, yeah. I mean, that's me. And again, I go back to elementary school being interested in trading. And, and if you're struggling and you can't get over the hump, I mean, don't be afraid to, you know, to look, seek out a mentor or again, just find your mentors in books. You know, yeah. that's a, or just I, be I, think ben, I think, I think Ben Franklin said that, you know, totally just be self-reflective and, and, and keep track of like, where is it you get stuck? Where do you repeatedly bump into patterns and not make yourself wrong for it, but begin to notice, even if you're just keeping a journal around your yes, trees yeah. and keeping a, a journal around where you lost your sense of neutrality and don't make yourself wrong for it and say, huh, this seems to be a pattern I have. I wonder where it comes from. You know, I always say to people, use the word what instead of the word why, because why elicits justifying and defending and kind of like as if you've been made wrong. So ask yourself, I wonder what's going on. I wonder what's behind that. Yeah. And I, think and I, I, I a huge fan of that. I mean, I've got journal entries from, you know, 13 years ago when I got started. I mean, I think that it's just, you know, it's one thing to be sit there and kind of think about what you did wrong or the mistake you made, but there's something that happens when you write that down too. Yeah. And, and I, I think that, you know, and I, and maybe, maybe you write it down and you throw it away. I mean, I yeah. would say save it. Yeah. But, um, I think there's something that happens there and, and, and it's writing it down, not typing it down. Yep. Like there is something cognitively that does occur when you're putting certain things down on paper, you become more self-reflective. You be, you're able to see the situation in a very different way. Yeah. I think, I think every, well, not every, but I mean, I obviously read tons of self-improvement books and stuff like that, but you know, so many coaches, so many people, you know, they'll, they'll tell you that saying that, that might be the, that might be like the one common thread in everything. Yeah. It's like write right. down your goals, you know, yeah. like literally write them down, look yeah. at them each day. And it's That's like right. all of a sudden it's interesting the way that that works. And I think a trade journal, if, if you're not keeping a trade journal, I mean, there's so much that happens in one day, especially in day trading. I mean, if you're just, if you're buying one stock a month, okay, you're not going up and down this roller coaster. Yeah. But if you're, if you're running scans every day, you're looking at the most volatile stocks of the day. I mean, hell it's sometimes I, you know, I don't remember what I traded yesterday without looking at my journal because there's just so much information. Totally. So. Totally. And you know, you know what I want to speak to and, and I know you turned me on to one of these electronic kind of versions of it is I'm a huge fan of the artist's way, yep. which is uh, a woman who's Julia Cameron, who speaks about writing three pages every morning, Yep. the morning pages, she calls them uh, in a notebook, three full pages where you don't even know what you're going to say. You just kind of pour out whatever it's in your kind of clogged up in your head around the day before about the day ahead, all the nervousness that you may feel or frustration you may feel, whatever's going on for you. And if you write these three pages every day, she just feels it. And I have done it. It just is kind of like a clearing. It's like mm -hmm. erasing the board, you know, getting rid of all the kind of old stuff and starting your day fresh. And when I talked to Tim about it, you told me about the site that allows yep, yep. you to do it online. Yeah, it's uh, and, and if you want to check it out, seven hundred and fifty words dot com, and I mean, you know, the, I think again, I agree with Kim that if you can do it longhand, I think that's the best way. Yeah. Or you can just use a text editor. You can use any editor. But what's cool about seven hundred and fifty words dot com is it kind of gamifies it. You know, it gives you a little streak indicator. That's you right. know, and you see your little streak indicator, just like I've got go. You know, I've I've got my my Peloton showed up Thursday. I've got my four day streak going. So it's like, I'm, you know, I'm motivated to get back on it because I don't want to break my streak. And I think we want to see you on the Peloton bike. Actually. I, I, I I, yep. I tell you, it's, 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 it's kind of embarrassing. You know, I, uh, Why? It's, Why? It's, it's, no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to say, you know, 
first of all, I highly recommend the thing. It's really cool. I mean, I'm a nerd. So the are, you engage- on, are you long on Peloton? Yes. Yep. Yes, I am. I actually bought That's some the other day. Buy it. So, Come on. <laughs> um, but you know, the first day, you know, so what's cool is you, I'm sure most people are familiar, you know, it's this interactive coach. I mean, it's not real time, okay. but it's like they're, they're coaching, you know, they're talking you through it. They're riding with you. And in typical, you know, aggro Tim Bowen, <laughs> you know, I pick like the hardest workout for the first one. And again, it's a good thing. I don't get, have neighbors because the things I screamed at that lady <laughs> would probably get me arrested but <laughs> it's, you know you turn up that the and you're riding up a hill and your quads are just burning and i i might have said some things that weren't particularly <laughs> nice to, i mean i'm sure they're very nice young ladies but the things i said i we, were, were not appropriate i'll tell you that much but <laughs> I think we need some film. You gotta get your your uh, you know little tripod recorder. I, I want to see you. I, I joked on about the it. Yeah. I, but I need I need somebody with one of the bleeper things because because <laughs> you know I, you I, get I, Matthew I, on that. Yeah, talk talk about you know outrage <laughs> on the internet with, with with the things I was screaming. There there was reason to be outraged. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. But anyway, back to seven hundred fifty words. You know, I. Especially like, especially like trading related. I think it, you know, if you don't want to do the long hand, yeah. you know, fire up that text editor and just write about, you know, cause it, you know, like, how did you feel? You know, were you tired? Hey, you know, were you sick? Did totally. you sleep like shit? You know, were you hung over? What happened you know, with your you girlfriends or your boyfriend? Yeah, did, did you, did you, did you get in a fight with the wife this morning? And then you Correct. had four losing trades. Correct. Okay, well, maybe next time you get an argument with the wife, you don't trade that day Correct. You know, or, or something like that. Correct. Yeah. So, Absolutely. I just think people being self-aware is the key. And the only way you can really be self-aware is if you're not going to beat the hell out of yourself yes, yeah. as you begin to discover who you are and what makes you tick. So, so, so that's, why, that's why I love Billions, because yeah. I feel it's doing that for a lot of men that wouldn't otherwise get that memo. So, um, so if you've watched Billions, you know, I'd like to see a comment. Let, let us know. Basically, I just want to know, do you think it was useful for trading? You know, so let us know in the comments. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, one thing we, Stephen and I did this, uh, geez, a year and a half ago, but another Kim idea was, you know, talking about our favorite trading movies. Yeah. So um, if you've got a trading related movie or a show, I don't think there's many shows other than Billions. Mm-hmm. Also drop those in the comments because, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to talk about that and, you know, and, and there's a good chance there's something maybe one of us haven't seen. So if you've got another show or a movie you think would be cool and you'd like yeah. to hear our opinions on, or you think we'd like to check out, drop that in the comments as well. That would be fun. It'd um, be fun to watch. So we'll have to do a movie. If, if after, if people, if you guys all tell us the movies, then we can watch the movies and then we can talk about those exactly. movies. That yep, would be yep. so much fun. So. So um, as always, would like to thank you for listening and be sure if you're on, you know, if you're listening on the iTunes or whatever, head over to steadytrade.com. We'll link up, you know, whether it be 750 words or, or the books we talk about. So Artist Way. Yep. Yep. Artist Way, which I read that book six, seven years ago as well. Um, That's why I found 750 words. Well, I think it was through Tim Ferriss, obviously. Oh yeah. Tim and I are both big fans of Tim Ferriss as well. So yes. So again, I, was, I wrote one of Tim Ferriss's first uh, top 100 reviews. He actually emailed me to ask me to write a review of his book. That's how early I read that book. And you know what I'm going to say right now, right? No. You do too. You know, what, what do you think I'm going to say? Uh, that I'm making it out? I don't know. No, no, no. One more guess. Um, that you're that you wrote one of his top 100 reviews too oh no no your job your homework now is to get tim ferris on the steady trade oh my god you should have saw that coming come on i should have saw that coming. that was a softball that That was a softball all right anytime anytime (laughs) you mention any of these contacts what's the first thing i say the first thing you say gotta be on the (laughs) show all right tim ferris you better help me out man i have to remind you that i wrote one of your top 100 first under reviews of your four-hour work week all right let's hope he's gonna be he might be harder than 
I don't know, him and Joe Rogan are probably going to be the hardest ones. There, yep, yep, we'll, we'll get to work. Right. Yep, yep. So. I'll do what I can. All right. I think thanks. I still have his email. We'll see. <laughs> thanks again, Kim. And thanks again to all of you listening out there. And like I said, head over to statetrade.com, drop us a comment, and we will see you next time.